That's why I want to ask this. There was a lot of leakage about what was going to happen to Terry Collins. Um, some people thought it was right. Some people thought it was mean. What, what was your opinion on how some of the media was used last week, so to speak? Well, I, when you say used, I don't, I don't know that that's necessarily the case. Um, it's, you know, there's a story there. So that story needs to be reported. And I know that, that uh, Mark, uh, Mark Carrig, or Carrig, however he pronounces it, from Newsday, took a lot of heat, especially from Sandy Alderson, because of the story, and that he didn't appreciate the story uh, as it was written because there was a lot of negativity about Terry. And, you know, the, the, the word was that, that a lot of uh, Mets brass wanted Terry fired, uh, but that Fred Wilpon was, was, you know, adamant about, you know, no, we're not firing Terry. And, I don't, I don't, I still don't understand why the fire Terry crew, I mean, what, what did they expect him to do when, when, when your, when your ace is on the DL for most of the season, that's Syndergaard, uh, Matt Harvey was awful this year coming yes, back from the thoracic outlet syndrome surgery. Um, who am I missing? Matt's was, was hurt for most of the season. You know, Degrom was the only healthy one, and I'm still missing. Who's the other one I'm missing? Um, well, Come on, brother, you're the Mets fan. Well, no, Bartolo. I mean, well, it, 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 stop. <laughs> um, who's the other idiot that I'm that I'm missing? I don't know. Mets, Degrom, Syndergaard. You love the Mets, so Harvey and whatever, whoever the other one was. But oh, uh, Wheeler was Wheeler. also hurt for okay. most of the season. So when when eighty percent of your staff has major slash significant injuries and, and your team is built on pitching, what's the manager supposed to do? I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing he can do. The, the, you can't blame Terry Collins for what happened this year. It's too... I don't blame Terry Collins at all. So, I really don't. Because last, last season, the Mets overachieved because they had a similar slew of injuries. And, and this year, the, the injuries proved to be See, if, if totally I was the Mets, If I was the Mets, you know... The, it's sort of like the Tom Coughlin situation when the Giants didn't know when to get rid of him or how to get rid of him. They would say, well, we're going to give you one more year. And that's what basically I would have given to Terry Collins. But I also would have said to Sandy Alderson, I would have said, hey, guys, let's get together here. You guys are going, you're going out together if, you, if we're going to be bad next season. That, and that's what I would have said to both of them and then work it from there because well, I think Sandy Alderson should be on that same train that, uh, that Terry Collins is on. Well, so. part of the issue is that Sandy Alderson was more or less sent to the Mets as kind of kind of almost like an angel. <laughs> I'm not sure that Sandy Alderson actually wanted to be the Mets GM, but but you have to remember when he came in, that was right around the time where, where the whole Madoff thing was getting settled. The Mets the Mets themselves were a very unsettled club because of all of that, and, and because you know the the, the financial uh, situation was. was was so uh, uh, dire, was tenuous, dire, dire, and also, tenuous, also, whatever, you know, but, next year they 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 are talking about not spending money. That, well, you know, that would be an enormous mistake, and 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 you can't do that on this team because how do you how do you what's left on this team? Nothing, nothing. But you, you need you, 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 need, you have you have a, a, an enormous question mark at third base. Uh, you have Rosario at short. You have. Estrubal Cabrera at second, which I, I expect them to, to pick up his option because it, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly uh, inexpensive option. Uh, and you have Dominic Smith at first base. So, so you have two rookies and, and one veteran second baseman, and who knows what's going on at third. All right? Your, your outfield, if you're the Mets, is Cespedes, Cespedes if he's healthy. Uh, I, I still don't really think Nemo is, is, a, is a big league ball player or he's at best a fourth outfielder. I, I, I wouldn't want him starting for my team. Right. Uh, and and you know, when at what point is Conforto going to be healthy? Well, I don't know. He, he's going he's to miss a couple of months next year with his shoulder surgery. It's hard to believe. So, so now you're looking at, at Juan Lagaris, and you, you're probably going to have to start Nemo. Probably. Brother, we're going to take a break. You're listening to From the Press Box right here on 90.3 WHPC, streaming on the iHeartRadio app later to be on the Spreaker.com as a podcast. So a lot of ways to listen. 
Come on, everybody. Let's sing along with Bruce. Join me, Kim Tracy, for the music of Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band on Thunder Road, Sundays at 1 p.m. on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC and on the iHeartRadio app. Nassau Community College presents the 32nd Italian Heritage Day. Italian American heroes and celebrity. And that's Monday, October 16, 2017, in the NCC College Center Building, rooms 252. 253. The Italian American Heroes and Celebrity will present some of the speakers are Italian Rescue Holocaust Victims, Spices, Surveillance and Sabotage, and a guest speaker will be Mr. Tony Lobianco talking about the making of an Italian American actor. I hope you will all come down on the NCC College Center building October 16th, 2017, rooms 252-253. Arrivederci! It's now easier to listen to the voice of Nassau Community College on your phone. Stay connected to your favorite radio station anywhere you go on the iHeartRadio app. Never miss shows like the Nassau Morning Madhouse, It's Saucy, or the Radio Rumble Again. Streaming 24-7, 365. Listen to WHPC everywhere. iHeartRadio is radio and unlimited music all in one app. Listen live now in the iHeartRadio app and at iHeartRadio.com. Just search for 90.3 WHPC. We're back here on From the Press Box on the voice of Nassau Community College. 90.3 WHPC. From the Press Box, I'm Rob Leonard. Tim Leonard's on the phone today going to jury duty right after the show. Literally going to jury duty. Literally going to jury duty. Sprinting to the courthouse. Sprinting. He's not even stopping by Chop Chop Chicken to get some chicken. And no, not at 10 o'clock in the morning. No, but why not? You know, you know, I love Chop Chop. It's not even I the real name of the place, at 10 folks. 10 o'clock in the morning. For those who are saying, what's well, Chop Chop Chicken? It's a place I call Chop Chop Chicken. I forgot the name of it when it's somewhere. It's called the Chicken House. Yeah, the Chicken House. Anyway, uh, I have to read this, brother. Uh, the Squared Circle, for those who are interested in sports entertainment, every Monday at 4 p.m. right here on WHPC. Join host Justin Greenberg and Anthony Tartamella as they recap the week that was in the WWE and preview upcoming matches. Plus, of course, get a spotlight on the independent circuit, which sometimes stops by Long Island. So that's every Monday, the Squared Circle, Sports Entertainment, the WWE, Mondays, 4 4 p.m. right here on WHPC. Anyway, brother, um, we can't forget. Well, let's quickly talk about the Yankees. I guess I was going to talk about college basketball and the cesspool that it, that has always been, but let's talk about the Yankees. They are in the yes, wild why card. Are we, why, why are we waiting so long to get to the good news this week? I don't know. Yes, Come on, there's so much other good news. I guess isn't there? No. You're Everything right. we talked about so far has been bad news. Yeah, that's true. Even I, the Jets winning is bad news because <laughs> it's, it's costing them a quarterback. Anyway, tomorrow. Uh, the wild card game for the AL happens. Uh, or actually, there's two AL wild card games, right, brother? No, we'll just the one. one. Okay, this one. Well, we only need one. Yeah, okay. It's the Yankees versus Minnesota. Game time eight o'clock. It will be um, ESPN at, is on the, ESPN uh, broadcast home. The uh, broadcast home, and it will be on at Yankee Stadium. Um. The Yankees are on a roll, brother. I, uh, as a Met fan, I hate to say it, but you know what? They are. Then again, I did predict that they'd make the playoffs, or at least have yes, a, bro. Actually, I said they'd have a very good season. I, I, this, I is the only, this is the only reason I'm glad the season's over, because you can stop patting yourself on the back now. I, I will do it forever and ever. I know. Because I predicted something you didn't. So, anyway. Well, the, the Yankees did win 90 games, which definitely was uh, probably a good five more than I thought they were going to win. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I figured, you know, I, I knew about Aaron Judge cause, because, you know, I'm a, I, I'm a baseball connoisseur. Uh, anyway, Aaron Judge, 53 homers this year. Uh, will he be a, the rookie of the year? Of course, unanimous. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Just asking. Um, and will could he be the MVP? 
He will be second in the voting. Second, okay. Because of the big September that he had. But, uh, yeah, he, he, I, I, I think it's an easy decision to have Jose, Jose Altuve of the Houston Astros be the MVP. I, 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 I've been following that kid since, since before he was in the major leagues. Um, and, and actually, um, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Back in the day, when, not so long ago, when Houston was still in the National League, uh, I wanted to take Jose Altuve in my, in my rotisserie league because we, we would draft minor league players. Right, and and despite the fact that he's like probably at best five foot six, you know, I, I saw the numbers that he was putting up in the minor leagues, and I was like, you know, holy cow, this guy can hit, and and you know, if you can hit, you can hit anywhere. I didn't expect the power that he was going to bring, but I'm figuring, all right, I'll, I'll get a guy that's going to hit, you know, three twenty, three thirty. I'd love to plug him in into my uh, my team. He'll score a hundred runs. He'll be like a table setter kind of guy. You know, great. I'm willing to wait for him. Well, then the Astros went to. The, the American League, and that screwed up that great plan. But Altuve has far exceeded any expectations that I had from him, and I had some, some reasonably high expectations. He is, as far as I'm concerned, he might not be the most dangerous hitter in terms of, you know, like a, a, a Aaron Judge or a Giancarlo Stanton or, or a guy who can mash the ball, but he just makes consistent contact, and, and he is going to put the ball in play and, and and then when he gets on base, he can run. He can steal bases. He he's he's just a guy who does everything. And and he can and he can hit twenty home runs despite the fact that, like I said, he's about five six. So it's just he, he's a complete ball player. And and he's a guy who he's done everything this year. He's got more than two hundred hits for I think it's the third, the fourth straight season. Right. Um, he he's the guy. As many talented players as the Houston Astros have, with Carlos Correa and George Springer and uh, you know guys like that, he's the guy that makes that team go. And I, I think I think he's an easy choice for MVP, even with the season that Aaron Judge is at. Um, you know, just because of the slump that, that Judge had to start the second half, which you know nobody has reported. I still think something that had something to do with the shoulder injury that he had that, that nobody really talked about, um, but. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm looking at Judge as, as a second in that voting. Um, I still think if you're looking at, at pitching in the American League, I, my choice for Cy Young is Corey Kluber. I, I know that people are you know say, Chris Sale from the Red Sox is going to get a lot of support. Had 300 strikeouts. Uh, Kluber's ERA is more than a half a run better than Chris Sale, and and that should count for something. Uh, we'll, we'll see if it does. That, that vote should be close, and I think uh, Luis Severino from the Yankees probably will wind up third in that, which you know is a great accomplishment for a guy who they, the Yankees didn't even know if he was going to be a starter this year. That's a good point. You know, you remember in spring training they were talking about leaving him in the bullpen because he was so effective in the bullpen last season. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, so uh, do you think the Yankees beat the Twins or? I I would I, I will say this, and and I I'm I'm not usually one for. For making bold predictions, although I do do you know I do I, I do it. I, I I can't imagine the Yankees losing this game. I really can't. First of all, the Twins don't have a a a, a, a shutdown starter, an ace kind of guy. Um, as far as I know, Edwin Jackson is going to start the game for them. And actually, let me just double check that while I'm talking. But I I can't imagine Severino not having the kind of game that he's had, especially in the second half or, you know, I mean, he's a guy, Irvin Santana, what, who would I say? I would Jackson, my mistake. Uh, but yeah, Irvin Santana, who's had a, a, a really good season for the twins, but he's not an ace. He, his career has been spent as a, 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 a decent to pretty good pitcher. He's had a great season. He's 16 and eight, three, two eight ERA, but, Severino is a guy who can shut down a lineup, right. and Irvin Santana is not that guy. So, and, and with the way that the Yankees have, have just dominated the Twins over the last five, six, seven years, and especially in the playoffs, I, I just, I just don't see this. I don't see it happening for Minnesota. Well, we'll see what happens. By the way, the Yankees have announced that the protective netting 
will extend down. They did, how, did they say how far it's going to go down? They haven't said. It, 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 it's, just, the, it's just they said.